Australia has a global reputation as a land full of danger, where it seems like just about everything can kill you. Crocodiles lurk in tropical waters, huge spiders hide in our bathrooms, and even venomous plants grow along bush tracks. Not to mention venomous snakes. We have some of the most venomous snakes on the planet. Now, my whole life, I've been fascinated and obsessed with snakes. Now, we, our family pet wasn't a cheeky cat or a fluffy dog, but rather a scaly 2.5 meter python. I skipped the fear stage and went straight to fascination and never went back. Now, I'm not the only one fascinated by snakes. For thousands of years, many people all around the world have had this acute fascination with snakes, which is often accompanied by fear. And it seems like it's maybe for good reason. Our very own eastern brown snake can kill an adult human in less than one hour. It's one of the fastest acting snake venoms in the world. And that's just one of over 150 venomous species of snakes inhabiting our island continent across the land and sea. Terrifying, right? Well, I'm here to convince you otherwise. In Australia, we're actually very lucky when it comes to snakes. Here are seven facts as to why. Number one, Australian snakes bolt away from us. So picture you're on a bushwalk, or perhaps just on a property somewhere, and your worst nightmare, my dream, materializes before your eyes. You spot a snake. Now luckily, chances are most Australian snakes, excluding the mostly uncommon death adder, will rapidly bolt away from us. And that's because they physically can. See, they're active foragers that rapidly chase their prey down. So that means they can also bolt away from predators such as us. It's only their absolute last resort to strike in self-defense, but only if they feel that their life is in danger. Now picture you're walking in Mexico or perhaps Indonesia. They share their country with uh, vipers and rattlesnakes. Now, those groups of snakes can't physically bolt away with their short and stout bodies, and instead, they have to stand their ground, and therefore it's easy to tread on them, and it leads to them striking in self-defense. Now, unlike Australian snakes, these snakes can actually sense our body heat with their heat-sensing pit organs on their face, which means even if you stand still, they can still see you. But in Australia, if you encounter a venomous snake, you stand still to stay safe. Fact number two, Australia has very few snake bite deaths every year. Now, unfortunately, this number isn't zero, but the two or three deaths that we do have each year, they result from the patient improperly managing their snake bite prior to arriving to hospital. Now, I'll touch on that a little bit more later. But how does this figure compare with other countries around the world that have snakes inhabiting their country? Well, it's many times lower than almost all of them. So in some regions of our closest northern neighbor, Papua New Guinea, snakes called taipans kill more people than malaria. Now these taipans are highly venomous and also abundant there, and that contributes to there being 120 deaths per 1,000 snake bites there. And that's compared with our one death per 1,000 bites. Now, this massive disparity in survivability of snake bites across these two countries exists despite our two countries overlapping and sharing many of the same or closely related venomous snake species, illustrating how lucky really we are in Australia. Now, an extreme example is India. They average every year 58,000 snake bite deaths. Now, this high figure isn't merely due to the high population of 1.4 billion people that live there, compared with our 25.7 million here in Australia. Because if you account for population and you calculate the rate of snake bite death per 100,000 people in the population, in some parts of India, that number is 6.7, 
whereas across Australia, it's 0 0.13. Now, why that is, is largely due to our great access to excellent care and treatment we have in Australia, which leads us to fact number three, we're so lucky. We have great access to excellent antivenom. So antivenom is the only specific treatment for snake bite currently. Now, how it's produced is by first extracting the venom from the species you're trying to treat bites from and then slowly, routinely injecting small doses of that venom into a domesticated animal, such as a horse, and then purifying antibodies from that horse for later injection as a medicine into a patient. Now, because it is a uh, foreign animal product being injected into the, your body, it can sometimes result in anaphylaxis. And that's something like a peanut allergy. Now, in Australia, this occurs around 10% of the time, whereas other countries' antivenoms, that can result in anaphylaxis up to 57% of the time. Now, these antibodies, they help fight the venom toxins in your body by targeting it for destruction by our body's natural immune system. Now, other countries' antivenoms, they're they can be alarmingly ineffective at actually helping the patient. So some countries, they don't even require preclinical laboratory testing of these antivenoms before clinical use. In other countries, they even actually dilute the antivenom down to save money or perhaps make more money. Now, so if you are unlucky enough to be bitten and envenomated by a venomous snake, getting antivenom as soon as possible is absolutely vital. Now, fortunately, antivenoms work quickly, and Australia's are of high quality. So they are regularly tested for uh, quality control and effectiveness. They're a registered drug and medicine with the Therapeutic Goods Administration, and they have decades of positive track record. Regarding access, antivenoms are available across most major hospitals in Australia, about 750 of them. And for more remote regions, it's a Royal Flying Doctor service that can come to the rescue. Now, fortunately in Australia, we actually have a first aid snake bite measure, which when done properly, actually buys you time before arriving to hospital for that antivenom treatment. Now this snake bite first aid, it's called pressure immobilization. And that's simply wrapping the limb with an elastic bandage up the limb as tight as you would a sprained ankle or a sprained wrist. Now less lucky countries like the USA, they don't actually have this option as a first aid technique. And that's because the majority of their snakes result in severe cytotoxicity and necrosis, meaning local tissue damage is quite severe at the bite site. So a patient who's been bitten by a snake in, in the States can be worse off, basically, when arriving to hospital compared with an Australian snake bite patient. Fact number four. So we have the world's only snake venom detection kit. So antivenom is designed to treat specific groups of snakes or a specific species of snakes, then how does a doctor know which antivenom to administer? Well, it's not through identification of the snake by the victim, because more often than not, the public gets snake ID wrong. But since 1979, Australia has been the only country in the world with a commercial snake venom detection kit to make antivenom choice more accurate. Now, how it works is something similar to a COVID rapid antigen test or a rat, but instead of detecting the virus on that little litmus strip, these little wells detect different toxins from different groups of snakes. This kit here was actually used on me. So, fortunately, as I said, we do have these kits. Now, for countries that, well, all other countries for that matter, they have to rely on more dangerous options when it comes to antivenom choice. Now either the patient has to catch the snake 
and bring it into hospital for ID. I would not recommend that here for sure. Or the doctor has to rely on the patient's symptoms and geographical area in order to make an educated guess as to which species bit them and therefore which antivenom to use. Now, as you can imagine, this can be quite difficult because different species, unrelated species that require different antivenoms can actually produce overlapping pathologies and similar symptoms, making it extremely difficult, particularly for inexperienced doctors, to navigate this complex medical emergency and choose the right antivenom. Fact number five, if you're bitten by a venomous snake, in Australia, you're very unlikely to lose a limb. So snake bite in Australia, it's typically painless. And, and that's in part due to the short fangs of our most offending group of snakes, the brown snakes. But it's largely due to their venom having little to no local effect at the bite site. Now, in other countries, they actually uh, have a lot of cytotoxic uh, action from their venomous snakes, and it can cause a lot of extreme pain. But because ours are painless and have little to low local effects, it means that in Australia, amputations as a result of snake bite is actually very rare. Now, by contrast, areas across sub-Saharan Africa, amputations are unfortunately very common with their most populous country, Nigeria, reporting up to 2,400 amputations from snake bite every year. Now, unfortunately, the people most at risk are the ones least able to afford the high treatment cost, which leads me to fact number six. Snake bite treatment in Australia is covered by Medicare, our universal health care. So antivenom can be prohibitively expensive, costing thousands of dollars per dose. Now back to our northern neighbor example, Papua New Guinea. So one dose of antivenom there can be out of reach for many people because it can cost up to 60% of one's annual income. Now, in America, in the United States, a country which has relatively good health care uh, available, now, with snake bites there, it can actually bankrupt someone. With medical bills exceeding over $140,000. Now, these exorbitant medical bills, they result from that high antivenom cost, but also the, the dozens of uh, vials of antivenom required to correct symptoms, but also due to the high daily cost of intensive care units. Now, despite our venomous snakes being some of the most potent in the world and being much more potent than their North American counterparts, snake bite in Australia will cost only around $6,000 the treatment and care. And that's covered by Medicare. Now, for countries without this option that do experience a high snake bite burden, in the lab that I manage, we're working hard to make snake bite treatment more affordable. Now we do this by conducting preclinical laboratory tests on next generation snake bite therapeutics. Now one compound called verisplitib has performed so well in our in vitro tests, including on human blood, that it's recently progressed to phase two of human clinical trials. So fact number seven. Snake venoms can save lives. Now, it may be hard to believe, but snake venoms are actually saving hundreds of thousands of lives every year. Well, yes, I said venom, not anti-venom, venom. Now, there's actually six therapeutic drugs on the global market today that have been derived from snake venom toxins and another three, at least, in clinical trials now. Now, a super successful example is captopril. Now, that therapeutic drug was modeled off a toxin from a South American viper's venom. And what it does, it lowers high blood pressure, which otherwise causes heart disease 
and is a leading cause of death worldwide. So an example from our own backyard here in Australia, our most feared snake, the eastern brown snake, well, there's a toxin from that species that's actually undergoing clinical trials now. Now, it prevents blood loss during trauma surgery on patients that are on blood thinners or anticoagulants. So our many venomous snake species, they hold in their venom glands many drug libraries with therapeutic promise. Now, how we view snakes isn't some trivial thing. It affects our attitude toward them, our behavior, and our everyday interaction with them, how we manage them as a society, and also, especially, how much funding we provide to better understand snakes and to prevent their extinctions. So rather than fearing and persecuting our Australian venomous snakes, let's try to see them as they are. Statistically speaking, they pose little risk to us. They flee from us. Their bites are often quickly cured. And their venom may one day save lives. So I, I hope today that I've convinced you that despite our Australian snakes being some of the most venomous in the world, that really we should, we should learn to respect and appreciate our snakes. And Australia is truly lucky when it comes to snakes. <laughs>